And here are your hosts of the Mets cast, Nick Durst and John Brown. Spring training is almost over, and spring is officially here, but if you live in the Northeast, in the New York, New Jersey area, you certainly would think it's still winter. We're past the hot stove, and we're just about ready for opening day. Opening day is next week. Imagine if opening day was today and it snowed. That would have been crazy at City Field. We're back with another episode of the Mets cast right here on WGSports.com. I'm Nick Durst, joined again, as always, by John Brown. John can you believe the season's just about ready to start next week? Yeah, you know, I, I can't believe it. I, I feel like spring training just flew by. Uh, it doesn't feel like, uh, you know, summertime yet or even springtime here in the city. So, yeah. yeah, lots of cold weather, and that might definitely affect the outcome of some games next week when they're playing in New York. They probably should have started the games either down south or out west or something, but the Cardinals will be in town to play the Mets at City Field. And we know that pitching is going to be the key for this team this season. So let's get right into it. we got to talk about injuries again. Jason Vargas was diagnosed with a non-displaced fracture of his hammock bone in his right hand. And he had surgery Tuesday on that hand, which is his non-throwing hand at the hospital for special surgery. So he was hit on Saturday with a line drive. And at this point, it's up in the air as to whether he'll be back in time for the regular season. He is going to resume throwing this Sunday, and he did throw a modified bullpen session Monday, the day before he went for surgery, and he did acknowledge that he could potentially miss a starter to April, saying that his right hand needs to heal to the point where he catch the ball and grip the bat. People need to realize now he's coming over to the NL, he needs to be able to swing the bat, or at least bunt, and that's going to be a big case, so... He may miss a few starts. I personally think, John, that they should not rush him to come back. There is no purpose. There's no point in that. There's no reason to. Because we've seen many times the Mets rush people back only for them to get hurt in their next game, and they're out for months. Yeah, there's no reason to rush. Um, you know, not only does he need to be able to hold the bat, he needs to be able to field his position as well. So it's not like uh, he's the opposite lineman go up there with his hand taped. Um, so he's really got to be... Uh, you know, he has to be ready. He's a 35-year-old fifth starter. Uh, there's no reason to rush him out there. You know, I wasn't uh, really excited about him becoming the fifth starter anyway, so maybe this will do is save his arm for further down the season, and when we do need some innings, you know, to be eaten in, like, August, we'll get some really quality innings out of him now. Uh, maybe this is a good thing. Who knows? Yes. Yeah, so we'll see what happens with him. I think he'll be back in the middle of April. But remember, now yes, he's going to have to build up his, his strength again, might have to make a rehab start, we'll see. But the other flip side to this, the news is that for the first time, John, ever, at this point, we're looking like it's going to, we're going to see Syndergaard, DeGrom, Harvey, Max, and Wheeler pitch five in a row for the first time ever. Isn't that crazy to think about? Yeah, you know, it, it's let's both knock on wood right now and make sure that it actually happens. Um you know, when when these kids were all prospects, um, you know, that was like the best lineup ever, you know, almost like Generation K back way back when. Uh, but, you know, due to injuries and, you know, unforeseen stuff, you know, that, that hasn't happened. So uh, if they could all – that could be our rotation for the whole year, you know, the Mets uh, are going to be a hard team to deal with. I don't know if you saw the – it came out yesterday, the, the probability for us to uh, – make the playoffs and uh, win the World Series, you know, all that stuff that they do at the beginning of the year. Right, so for the predictions. What, what was the predictions for the Mets? 
So uh, the Mets have a 42% chance to make the postseason, but only a 1% chance to win the World Series. Uh, that's fan graphs. Jeez. And Sports Illustrated, they projected that the Nationals will be in the World Series. We know that's not happening because they have no chance of winning a playoff series. They never can. So it would be nice to see the Mets maybe try to contend for a division title, but could be could be tough. But like we mentioned earlier, the pitching holds up. Could be in good shape. The only thing that's really strange to me about this rotation is the fact that they've named Noah Syndergaard the opening day starter, and DeGrom's going to pitch the second game, when it's clear to me that DeGrom not only deserves to be the opening day starter because he pitched over 200 innings last year, and Syndergaard didn't even pitch 50 innings, I don't think, but the other thing is that DeGrom, he, this guy gets no respect across the league, when at worst he's like a top five pitcher in the league. He's the ace of the Mets staff. He's better than Syndergaard. And by the way... Syndergaard and DeGrom were voted the best one-two duo in, as far as pitchers go in the major leagues the other day by MLB.com, and I totally agree with that. They're a dynamic duo. But people overlook how, just how great DeGrom is, and he showed it in 2015 in the playoffs, and he's, he's shown it every year since he's been up, and he does not get enough respect. Yeah, you know, um, I don't know their thinking behind that. The only thing I can think of is maybe – Personality wise, you know, DeGrom's more of like this laid back, cool, like relaxed California kid. Um, and Thor is more of this, you know, uh, he likes the line life a little bit more. Maybe they think it's like a more of an ego boost. It's more valuable to Syndergaard than it is to DeGrom. You know, maybe DeGrom doesn't care. You know, he, DeGrom has sort of done a lot of this before. He's, he's pitched the All Star game, he started the All Star game. So that's maybe opening day really doesn't matter to him. Uh, it's one of those things that I think because baseball is so, uh, you know, so traditional, so like, you know, part of uh, our ethos, we, we, we forget that the Mets have had some terrible opening day starters, so it doesn't really matter. You know, like John Neese was it a couple of years, uh, Mike Pelfrey, yeah, the thing you know, about garbage. The day, though, is that it's almost, a, it's almost a lock every year the Mets are going to win. They're like the winningest team ever on opening day. Kazmat Sui, two home runs. Oh, jeez, Kazmat Sui. <laughs> let's, not, let's not relive him. Oh, jeez. Uh, but that's that's how the rotation shaped me out. I'm excited to see it happen. It's unfortunate Vargas got hurt, that we, so that's the way we could see it happen. But Syndergaard, DeGrom, Harvey, Mats Wheeler, definitely looking forward to seeing that. And John, all of them have looked good in spring training. And Mats, he's looked good too after he's bounced back from the rough two starts. But overall, these guys have looked really good. And you know who's looked the best? Matt Harvey. Um, well, I, you know... May, I haven't watched any spring training games. You know, I've listened to some. Um, I watched the first one. But, uh, you know, I'm looking at the numbers. It doesn't look like Matt Harvey's had the, the best spring training. But I guess he does have uh, 18 strikeouts in 20 innings. That is pretty good. Right. So, obviously, DeGrom, he's been, he's been dominant. And there's no surprise there. So the guards look good. They all look good. But people were saying, oh, no, 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 we're going to get at Harvey. I think he's looked good. Overall... I'm pretty happy with where this rotation is at, and it's gonna, the season's going to come down to them. They need to, if they do good, then the team's going to be good. But there is a little, you know, maybe this this might be an issue, and that's that. Let's say this team has the lead after seven innings or after six innings, they got to pull the starter, and we got to see Hansel Robles come into the game, John. That's going to be an absolute. Disaster. Game over if he comes in. The other team's going to win. Did you happen to see what his ERA was this with this spring training? I know you haven't watched, but let, let, me, let me tell you, John. You're going to be totally shocked. He's pitched eight games. He has 11 and two-thirds innings pitched. And his ERA is 9.26. Let me repeat that so, so you know you heard me the right the first time. 9.26. Six. How does that ERA allow a guy to make a major league team? Um, it doesn't, and there's really there's no uh, there's no reason whatsoever for for this guy to make this team and or make any major league ball club. Um, you know, scouts can say whatever they want about his arm, but obviously he doesn't have it. Uh, I didn't know about his ERA, but I did know about his home runs because he's given up uh, five home runs in uh, let's see how many innings. In eleven innings, so that's a, <laughs> a home run every one point two innings. So yeah, he he has a, his gas can that he had from last year. He looks like he's you know ready for the season, just how he was. But um, 
Right. I mean, I that's, you, this is like exactly what he did last year. Uh, it's the same thing. 2017, he was so bad. He had a 4.92 ERA. He pitched 56 innings. And he was just giving up home run after home run. He gave up 10 home runs. They gave up like two or three grand slams. And they, they sent it to the minors last year. And there's a reason they sent him to the minors. It's because he was terrible. And what does he do in the minors? He's even worse. 18 games. six, <laughs> And he has a 5.79 ERA. And he gave up five home runs. I don't understand why they are so high in this guy. They love him. They think he's going to bounce back or something. It's, it's time to move on. Get rid of him. Either release him, send him to the minors. Do whatever you got to do. And maybe you should sign Greg Holland. Greg Holland is the best closer free agent this offseason. Nobody signed him, and now he's probably panicking. He wants a job. Bring him in here, put him in the back of the bullpen with Familia, and it's going to be lights out at the end of the game. Yeah, um, I would love for that, obviously. But as long as they don't bring him on, I, I you know, I'd be pretty happy. He, you know. The Mets do this. They find a guy. They they get crazy about it. They you know they they think they're smarter than everybody else, and they this is gonna be their project, and it will turn out, and it'll be great. Um, it really never pans out, uh, especially with pitchers. You know, I know that he has a live arm, and that's important. But uh, he's just he throws a flat fastball. Um, you know, he he's a thrower. He's not a pitcher. You know, he's not outsmarting any batters. Uh, I think he's one of those guys where the biggest issue for him is between the ears. Uh, and hey, it happens. Look at uh, Rick and Keel. He just you know, right. he washed yeah, it mentally. Yes, and you mentioned projects. I mean, I think of John Neese because John Neese was like this project that they loved. They just loved John Neese, and he was just terrible. He was he was no good. They had him there. Thank goodness he's gone. But he just had him. He's like a cat. Nine lives. They just him and Roll West. They just can't get enough of these guys. And well, the one thing about Nice, and you know, that's probably everyone in baseballs has that problem. Is at least Nice was a lefty. You know, that's it. If, if you're yeah. lefty, they'll keep you around. What's Roll West? It's nothing. Right. So the other question is, Roll West is very famous for throwing a pitch, the ball getting hit, and him pointing in the air at the ball. Like, what is he pointing at, John, when the ball is traveling 430 feet over the fence for a grand slam? Um, I don't know. And the only thing I can think of is that he doesn't want to look like, you know, uh, he doesn't want that picture in the paper of him standing on a mound with, like, his mouth open, like, Duh, waiting for the home run to go over. I mean, could, no. you, could you imagine, like, like he, he thinks that he's pointing and helping the outfielders. Could you imagine, like, uh, Jay Bruce makes this amazing catch and after the game, you're like, Jay, how did you how did you track that ball down into the gap? He's like, well, you know what? I just, I looked at Hansel Robles and he pointed at it and I was able to find it. <laughs> like that's, um, that's never going to happen. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand it at all. Um, you know, I pitched obviously, you know, uh, in high school was the highest level I played, but um, I never pointed at it because that doesn't make any sense. Why would any of the fielders be looking at me? Um if the fielders are looking at me, there's a problem. They're not going to catch whatever it is. I don't. I don't understand. Uh, maybe he thinks it's. You know, I know baseball players are very superstitious, so maybe he thinks it's like good luck. Like, oh, if I point at it, it's not going to go out. I. I don't know. <laughs> I do not know. Something. Something's wrong with this guy. Like you mentioned, it's between the years. He might have some physical skills, but you know, at the major league level, if you're just throwing a 95 mile press. 95 mile per hour fastball right down the middle on the first pitch, the players are going to swing at that. That's going to be a home run, like eight times out of ten. The easiest pitch to hit in the major leagues is probably the fastball. A fastball, John, is what will get you to the major leagues or get signed by a major league team, but a fastball is not what's going to keep you in the major leagues. You need to develop secondary pitches. Absolutely, and and he probably falls into that category, which a lot of career minor leaguers do is, you know, early in the low minor leagues, he really dominated just because he's more physically gifted than these guys. So, you know, the bat speed in single and double A just isn't there, so he can just throw the ball right by him. As soon as you get to the show, every single one of those players has the bat speed to catch up to your fastball, no matter how hard you're throwing it. Um, The guys who throw hard but can conceal the ball a little bit, you know, like um, Chapman, I would say, uh, that's a little different because now you're just – throwing really hard, but you're also deceptive. 
his motion is not deceptive at all. It's a pitching machine. And guess what? Every single one of these guys rakes on a pitch, pitching machine. That's how they got to the pros. So you got to have something else. Um, you know, I always think of a, a great example of this is Trevor Hoffman. You know, obviously he had that great fastball early on. And then as he got older and, and his fastball lost some gas, he developed this amazing circle, circle change where he was arguably more effective because he wouldn't give up that long ball like when a guy would sit on his cutter or his fastball and just rock it out of the, out of the house. So he had a decent mid-90s fastball still uh, that he could get up there, but he had this like devastating changeup that it would just fall right out of the zone. Um, you know, I don't even know if Robles can throw a breaking ball for a pitch. If he does, it's probably not very good because he gets hit. It's uh, He just doesn't got it, whatever it is. And you know what? Maybe going to the minors, he can figure that out down in Vegas. Yeah, but there's the Mets have enough talent in their system without even worrying about signing other people, even though there's a ton of great free agents out there we get for real cheap. Just the guys that they've invited the spring, you know, there's a lot of guys who, who deserve that roster spot before. Right, they want it they want it more. Well unfortunately for us Mets fans, Hans Robles is definitely not the next Trevor Hoffman. Uh, as you listen to our show throughout the season, you're going to see a common theme of talking about why Hans Robles should not be on the team. But we might get blessed that he might not even make the roster, which would be fantastic. That's going to do it for another episode of the Mets cast. You can find John on Twitter at S underscore sports, and I'm on Twitter at Nick underscore Durst. Until next time, everybody, let's go Mets. <laughs> Thanks.